Hey, I'm back, and it's time for Chess Crutcher TV. So let's. Uh, I wanted to kind of um, kind of go to the side a little bit. On I want we uh, we did Jeremy Stillman um, reassess your chess, and I wanted to show you a game because we I did some games from him. I wanted to show you a game that really applies to the knight. Uh, and rook power, how you can actually uh, take advantage of closed positions. I wanted to show you how this works at knight versus bishop. I'm uh, black and my opponent's white. We do the French defense advance variation. And he uh, attacks my queen. So what I do is you're wondering, this is a, an important part right here. There's a couple ways you can play. You can, oops, you can play here, or you could play here, bishop to d7. This I don't um, is okay, but I don't like walking into a pin, especially if potentially it goes to a close game. I want to keep my knights on the board, so that's why I played uh, bishop d7. Also. Bishop d7 is for a purpose. See, my pawns, what color are my pawns on? All of them but two are on dark light squares. And what, how, what, how many square, what color is his pawns on? His are all dark squares. So his good bishop is his light square bishop. So if, he tra if I could trade off my bad bishop for his good bishop, then I have the ability of I'll have a good bishop and he'll have a bad bishop. Like I could push here if I wanted to, or take here, and after these piece uh, bishops get uh, exchanged, and I'll have a really good uh, bishop. He'll have a bad one. He trades. I take. Uh, I was thinking, should I take with the uh, the knight or take with the queen? See, this is another critical spot spot here. If I take with the knight, yes, I, I'm taking and developing a piece. But what really am I accomplishing? It takes two moves to get to an outpost. And what if he plays here, and I've already moved here? I don't have anything. I'd have to reroute my knight, and you know, think how many moves I had to had have to waste. One, two, three, four. I'd have to waste five moves because of taking with the knight. It looks like a good idea, but right now it's not the best idea. So I play queen takes because I'm also thinking about playing knight to c6. He plays pawn because he's doing the advance setup. Um, c3 I uh, take because I'm not worried about him putting a knight on right here because I, I now have a bishop that can pin his knight to his king. If he plays knight here, I could play bishop, pins to the king. So there's really no issue with the uh, taking. Otherwise, what you should do is wait till your opponent either goes to knight to a2, uh, a3, or knight d2 before you uh, take uh, the pawn. Back here, I'll show you. Before you take here, you want to either wait, usually uh, you want the knight white to go here or here before you take. Otherwise, they'd be able to go to a good uh, square on c3. But because of the bishops being traded off, it changes the whole scenario of the board. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if he implants a knight here because I can maneuver my two knights in to a better position than his. And so he plays knight uh, e2. The reason is he's trying to have two pieces controlling the d uh, the d4 pawn because if the d4 pawn falls, his whole line of defense falls. Excuse me. Okay. My goal is now I'm going to reroute my knight to um, f5. So I don't have to worry about it being taken anymore by a light square bishop because there is no light square bishop for him to do that. So I have an outpost almost indefinitely. 
because no light square bishop could challenge my knight on f5. He castles. I play knight to f5 uh, because I am now planning on going here. R. I could play here, here, and potentially there to undermine this pawn. I also can now uh, move my knight here and there. I can also reroute my knight and then play. See, the, the knight to f5 uh, is really powerful. It makes him have to react to d4. That was my idea. He moved his knight to c3. I pin, like I said, the, I attack the knight because what I'm thinking about doing is retreating back and then attacking the pawn three times. And then potentially I can do it a fourth time with my queen coming here. So I'll have a bishop here, knight, and there. So it's he'll have to give way. This is going to be uh, his thorn in his side, the d4 pawn. He attacks. He moves his knight. And I retreat back. And the reason is, I thought to myself, you know, I could play, I thought, what if I played here? Then I realized, hey, there, and I can't take. It'd be so nice if this d discovery actually worked, but it didn't. So I had to not be, I wasn't too happy having doubled B pawns, but you know what I mean? You have to sometimes do what you have. And he now has a dark squared bishop, but if you notice, it's kind of funny. His dark squared bishop is a bad bishop, so if I, as long as I keep my uh, pieces on light squares, I am still okay, because the majority of my pieces are actually on light squares. So they're, his bishop's kind of silly, so it wasn't too bad, but it's not good to have a pawn formation like this especially in the middle game he goes b uh, b5 I mean b3 I castle because um, at this point we're going into this is uh, all out war and if you notice that his um, pieces are uh, not coordinated they're um, not working together as good I have my wrist connected my my knights, yes, these pieces are kind of to the best of their squares, but I am actually more developed. And when the rooks are connected, when you castled, or if you just move, let's say I just move my king up and I, hey. Oh, okay. And so what, what happens is, uh, one second. Okay. What happens is uh, when you connect the rooks, you are able to uh, declare middle game. Like I could say middle game now because I'm fully developed. You also can. I'm just gonna go back. Okay, hold on. Go back. Okay, castles. Okay. I can also, if I wanted to, to do a middle game, I could play uh, king to uh, e seven if I wanted to that connects the rooks as well. But I thought to myself, what's safer? Castling is safer. So bishop to b3, I mean bishop b2, uh, that's what he plays. And it's kind of funny, I thought, huh, why did he, I know he brought another defender to, you know, protect the pawn, I understand that. But his bishop was moved to a, um, not to the best of the ability where it should be. He should have kept it on um, C1 and maybe played um, C3, I mean E3, because if he had played E3, Bishop E3, this is actually um, somewhat of a line in the French advanced variation. White, black would take so then his structure would be like this. And what would happen is that now what I would do is because I have these two, I have one open file, I move this rook here, take the open file. 
I also have a half open file, so I control two of the files that are open. So I'm actually in control. That's what usually would happen in the openings of the uh, French advanced variation. But he played uh, bishop to uh, b2, and I realized that this was an opportunity for me to uh, crunch open the center. See, if I can break the center, I have the ability to, again, open another file. Uh, this file right here, this one, isn't doing anything. So my next idea would be to take this file and have the rook on this file open for a huge attack on the king side. And I can also later on take here if I needed to. It lets my queen out. I could play here. There's a whole bunch of ideas with that break. He, and so I, I thought to my, I was thinking, huh, what his best move here should have been queen to either d uh, two or queen uh, d three to stop the this idea of a fork. When he played the drawback to f four is that it allows the knight to come into e three, which forks the rook and the queen. So the queen comes in. I snap off the rook. I win a rook for a bishop, I mean for a knight. And so what, what that does is it gives me an advantage. Yes, at this moment, the position's closed. But when it opens up, I have these rooks. These rooks will get beautiful open lanes. I could take here, and if he takes back here, I have a pass pawn. If I take here and he takes here, I now have an open file. I'm in control at this point because of the ability for a fork. That's what brought me into, into power at this moment. And so what I do is I go, you know what? If I can trade down, I can either have a bishop versus rook endgame. And a rook in this type of a position where there's a lot of pawns like this is stellar because I'm going to open the position up. I'll get my rook on the second uh, rank and I'll start hamling, uh, taking advantage of the second rank pawns. I can even get in maybe with a queen and rook mating the, the player. I can sack stuff. You know, there's a whole bunch. And so he takes, I take, he takes. I thought about should I bring my rook over? And I said, no. The reason I don't want to bring the rook over is the rook is attacking the a3 pawn, which makes the bishop have to stay in contact with a a3 for on b2. So if I bring the queen over and check, this allows my queen to be more active. I also can double up and then potentially do a checkmate on the back rank. So I play there, he intercepts with the queen. I now double up with my uh, my idea, because this bishop isn't going anywhere. It needs two, uh, basically two moves to really do anything. One here, and then it have to move to where it is. And now you see the power of locking these pawns on the same color, uh, his, uh, his pawns on the same color as his bishop, because his bishop has no scope at this moment. And if I can trade down to a rook versus bishop in this scenario, I would win. So any trades helps me out because I'm ahead on exchange. Even though these pieces are, these pawns are kind of wrecked, he can't access them. He takes, I take, and then what I'm doing is now I'm going after the weak uh, b3 pawn. He's going to have to go into full defense. He'll have he'll have, to, he'll have a bishop defending that, a knight defending that, and then potentially I can come here and actually go and attack his knight here as well. I can get to the second rank easily and start munching on his pawns like Pac-Man. So he goes there to defend. He moves his king up. I bring my knight back. Now I was thinking to myself, this is kind of a odd position because he's guarding for the moment all the all the entry squares for my rook but if I can activate my knight 
and my rook working together as a team, we can truly dominate these two pieces here. And that's what actually happens. He moves his king, his knight up. I bring my I bring my rook over. There's a potential for two entry spots: rook f2 and rook f4 to go after this pawn twice, and it's only defended once by the bishop. So the, there be have to be more defense brought to the front. And he moves his knight in. I'm not going to push this pawn because this pawn stops his knight from coming into c5 and wrecking havoc. So now the doubling of the pawns are good. If you see how at, at the very beginning in the middle game they were horrible. But now this doubled pawn that was once here stops this powerful knight. White's, White's knight is, is he in this position it's closed. He wants to activate his knight. He can't activate his knight. Because if he goes here, I take with the rook, I take with the rook, I take with the pawn. If he retreats back to these two squares, it's like, really, what did you accomplish by that? So I control everything right now. I bring my, I bring my rook in because I'm thinking about, I can't move here anymore because of uh, the knight. I'm thinking about either going here or here and taking on uh, attacking these two guys making them have to move which causes a weakness in his structure and I can always if I wanted to retreat my rook back slide over there's a whole bunch of different spots for my rook to go to <clears throat> and uh, so and I also want to put in um, if you if you have any games you'd like to go over I'm more than happy to go over some games as well. And if you uh, want to play me, um, I'm more than happy to play a game too. So just, uh, the, and then we'll go over the game like we're going over this so that we can uh, continue to improve. So I, I want to put that out there. If you got any games you want to go over, or if you have a, um, if you want to play me, just put in your name or invite me and we'll play. So back to what I was uh, on track. Okay, I can't really at this moment infiltrate into the position because um, there's really no no spot. And I was thinking about playing here and here to get this knight traded off. And then it would come down to a rook versus bishop. That was my idea in this end game. He attacks, so I I thought, do I want to go back here? Or do I want to uh, go back to F7? Because then I can play there. If I go back here, it blocks my king. And uh, then it, it also I have a protection on uh, B7 if there was anything to happen. So, And, uh, and he moves his bishop to uh, C1, which is actually a good move. Because it takes advantage of that my rook's not here now. To attack there, so he can get his bishop activated. I bring my knight in, and I'm I'm like, you know what? I'm not worried. I can when if his knight ever moves, I could play check. I could play here. You know, there's a whole bunch of ideas. I can even reroute if I wanted to. And then come here, or here, something like that. So he um, plays h3 because there's really not a lot to do. He's trying to put his pawns on the opposite color of his bishop, so his bishop is good. Now I'm going after the bishop, and I'm going to try to get a check in. And what I could do then is, if he moves up here, I'll bring my rook back up. I can be attacking this pawn, and I can come here with a check and win this knight double attack and it's on the opposite color of his bishop so he doesn't have a piece to defend the knight it'd be two versus one I'd win so you have to look for those small changes in the position I'm now bringing my knight in because I can play here attacking that pawn and then I can reroute attacking this pawn because he's actually pinned his uh, bishop 
uh, he's in the side of his bishop. He moves back. I'm coming. I'm coming back around. Because I wanted, he saw that I wanted to infiltrate either into here or here, so he comes back to there. And then what I do is I in, I bring my knight back. I implant my rook into an anchor point. This is my teacher uh, Nate. I had I had a chess teacher, and he called this is called an anchor point. It why it's called an anchor point is there's really nothing that can kick it out. So if this knight wasn't here, let's say he was gone, this is an anchor where the bishop has no hope of ever attacking it because it's on the opposite color of his bishop. So he moves back, protecting. I uh, I move back because I'm actually tickling him to see what, what he's going to do. In these type of positions, in closed positions, players get frustrated because they can't make any um, progress in their mind. So they might push, like he might push and I could take advantage of it. And that's actually what happens. He plays and then I move back. Now I'm trying to infiltrate I see the, the weak spot on f2. That would skewer the uh, knight and the king. He moves his king. I move my knight. Now what I want to do is I want to go after, I want to go c6 and go after the weak d pawn. I could <clears throat> reroute and come, oops, sorry, I could go here, here, and here. Then I could be attacking this as well. And I could play there. There's a whole bunch in this and these closed positions. You have to be patient. That's why I brought this up. Was it's if I could say about this game what what it represents is patience first of all, and to see how a rook can through open files control the whole entire board. Like my rook is making both his pieces have to react because if I can get a rook here it attacks that if I can get a rook here it attacks that if he moves up here or if he moves over I can bring my rook down forking his king and the knight so this rook is super duper powerful and his bishop it's very silly looking right now So he brings his knight in. There's really nothing he can do. He, he <clears throat> if he goes here, that's guarded. If he goes here, I could just play there, but I wouldn't play there because that this pawn here stops his uh, knight from coming in. <clears throat> so what I do is now I'm infiltrating. I'm t tickling to see where he wants to um, play because I could play here if I wanted to. That forks these two uh, pawns. So yeah, just gotta see. He takes. I take. I take. And what happens is now, he could take here. If he does, I'm gonna take here. And he he does, and then I go check. Cause his bit hit the the smart idea, not smart. The best idea would have have been to uh, play king to uh, b2 to guard this bishop because I'm attacking it. What he plays is king d2, uh, which is actually the incorrect move because it allows me to play uh, rook to uh, d8. Because rook d8, you know, as you see, pins the pawn to the king. I mean, not pawn, the knight to the king, and there's no way he can guard it because it's on the opposite color of his bishop. So this knight will fall, and my opponent resigned. <clears throat> what he should have played was um, e here, and then he, I could have checked, yes. Then what would happen if he comes here? I could potentially, I'd have to actually move back. And then he'd move here. And you see how he's holding the position. It's not good, it's not bad, but he's holding. So, patience.
and that and basically what would happen is I'd be I'm I'm winning at this point. So he cashed in his cards and uh, decided to uh, say it's a good game. And so with that, I wanted to show you guys one of my games, and we'll do a couple tactics, and uh, I'm I'm gonna see if it, um, any of you guys would like to um, play me. Uh, so otherwise, I'm gonna have to log off because it's I I have work I gotta do a little bit. I'm probably gonna maybe play for 20 or 30 more minutes. But I wanted to uh, do some tactics. We've got to build up our tactic rating, guys. Okie dokie. But I wanted to show you that game. That was a really, really good, good, good game. Okie dokie. Let's see. Uh... I'm trying to see. Okay. Are you on? Are you on? I'll see. Let's see. So that <clears throat> the reason I want to show you that is how to slowly. Sometimes you have to slowly, slowly um, infiltrate into the position. You got to be patient. Uh, so, all right, now we're on to the game. So you just got to be patient when when it comes to close games. All right. Sure move.
you know, I'm thinking about, <clears throat> see, his structure is kind of crazily wrecked. If he takes, oh, interesting. I'm just going to play there and then. Uh, You know this isolated pawn, so every piece that gets traded down, <coughs> excuse me, makes these guys less, uh, like this is a really bad position for white at this moment. Threat is more important than the execution. Got to remember that. That was a mistake. Ah, triple fork. I haven't had that before.
That was a good game. Sometimes, I'm sorry about being so quiet, guys. Sometimes in this position, you have to uh, castle in the London. And I've kind of realized that, that you have to be balanced. And uh, that's what's happening here. We're, we're going, we're trying to get our balance in, uh, together. We're not going to just, uh, we're going to go after the, the pawn here, yeah. And so we won two pawns already, guys. And so now, and we have, if you notice, we have full central control. We have majorities on both sides. We just gotta we gotta stay focused and not stray from our idea. And remember you gotta be careful of forks.
So that, that landed a fourth between the queen and the, the rook. Oh, that was not fun. That was not a fun uh, thing. Missed that there, drat. Okay. We're still, we still, we're down one pawn, but that's not a problem. We'll just uh, we'll just get our we'll have to go into an end game. Don't like being down like that though. But you know what? You make mistakes and you have to live with it. <laughs> now this changes everything.
and we're uh, trying to uh, go after his pawn. See if we can
Well, this is gonna this is getting interesting here. This is coming down to the wire, guys.
Well, that was a close one. Yeah, good game. I think we'll call it uh, a day on that. Thank you guys for logging in. Thank you for the game. You got to see in this game how you got to be careful. Sometimes things that look like um, they're free to take sometimes end up a huge end game, a 68 move end game. So remember, be careful and always keep studying and have a good time because that's what chess is about. And guys, as always, remember what Wesley So said, serve the Lord Jesus. As I say, God bless guys, and I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a great night, great rest, and keep up the studying. Bye-bye, guys.